good Saturday morning if you're watching this live with me. What's up, everybody? It's Kate. Uh, we're going to take it uh, at the Saturday pace uh, today as we talk strong torso. Also, too, um, Wi-Fi has been sketch as all get out today, so I jumped on to the, just the 4G. We'll see if this actually plays. I have no idea because I have I normally do it on Wi-Fi when I'm with you guys. But uh, it is Saturday morning, and uh, sorry I didn't get to our Facebook Live last week. As I take a sip of my amazing coffee, um, the this week was crazy. So we'll jump into the lesson in a minute. Today we're going to be talking strong torso and how to make yours better and how to make your training better today. Make that actually support you, not just to feel good and be strong and powerful, but like avoid back pain and avoid injuries down the road and like, you know, be able to do all the things you want to do. You know, all the stuff we talk about at Fit for Real Life. Um, so I went through a ta an IRS audit this week. How about that? So I knew this was coming possibly coming for a little while because um, I had to amend my return from a couple of years ago uh, to make some corrections on it. And that's no big deal. Um, it's really no big deal. And it's amazing to me how many people, I guess it's not amazing, right? But how many people are like, oh my God, I would die worst day ever. Like if I had to go through that. And yeah, super hard. And I had to lean pretty hard on friends um, when it all was kind of like when I was preparing for it and doing all of these things. But I knew I hadn't done anything wrong. And I knew I hadn't, I knew nothing, like, there wasn't anything that I was, like, getting, going to get blamed for. It was like, oh, we just need to check our accounting and your accounting. Let's see which ones, which of these returns is more accurate, um, and then go from there. There was a lot of work to do. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this took every hour of my day, like, outside of work time, or going with my account and all that stuff. Um, but it was, like, emotionally and energetically exhausting to go through and prepare the entire thing, and then... It went well. They approved it. Like, everything went great. Like, ex exactly as I planned it would go. Um, and I was so stoked about that. Like I said on Facebook, like, it was the most powerful thing in the world to be like, yes! Like, I just stood up for my business. I was like, heck yeah, we just got this thing done. But nonetheless, um, it was emotionally exhausting and energetically exhausting. And I pretty much have had the flu, like, the rest of the week. With, that's what it feels like. So I was like, you know, I want to be, like, on my A-game, and I want to share great things with you guys. I can't do that if I'm feeling like crap. So today I feel hmm, better-ish. I'm still not well, but, like, but it feel better enough to, like, jump on with you guys. And it's Saturday, so I thought you'd be a little more forgiving of us, like, taking it a little slower today, letting me drink coffee, like, as we do this. So anyways, today we're going to get into strong torso. Got some notes here for you, too. Um... Okay, so uh, the one last thing I want to say about that. Um, it's no big deal if, like, you have to deal with really hard stuff and you don't feel so great, you know? Like, you don't really, like, respond as well to other people or you don't feel like doing much with other people or you, like, kind of let some responsibilities in your life, like, slide a little bit. Um, I found that, like, having, like, patience with myself helped me so much with regards to handling all of that audit stuff and making amazing cool things for you guys and still being able to do it, still feeling super engaged and connected to my community and my friends and my people. Um, and it's, most of that came from like reducing the standards that I was holding myself to as a recovering perfectionist. Um, that is something that has been a long practice and something I'd encourage you maybe to take a look at yourself if you are also identifying as a perfectionist. Um, when we can reduce those standards on ourselves just a little tiny bit, like Nobody notices the difference anyways. You all have had a great time here with me. My friends have all felt pretty good and uh, and felt like I've been connecting as best I can. Um, and so if you can do that, it might put you at a bit of ease and allow you to enjoy the process, even when you're going through something really hard and really time-consuming, um, to still feel pretty great, all things considered. My body wants to take a break, that's for sure. But mentally and emotionally, I feel pretty good. So anyways, we're going to talk strong towards on now. Okay. Oh, hi, Matthew. Thank you. And oh, by the way, guys, drop your questions in. We're going to answer them at the end before the joke. Okay, um, so strong torso. So people love to talk about doing planks and that's a better way thing to do than crunches, right? And uh, people love to do like 30 minute ab routines or 100 crunches or whatever. Um, there's so much information floating around out there. How do you know what the right thing is to do? And I was getting really frustrated at the gym the other day watching some people um, coach other people just because I was like, oh God, that's such a misinformation. But like also recognizing it's not my talking and we'll see. Um, the It's not my place to say anything. But also too, they're doing the best they can, right? Like everybody's always doing the best they can or they would do better if they could. And that's that's like a Byron Katie kind of thing. You're always doing the best you can because if you could have done better, you would have. 
So if you knew different information, you would have used it, of course. So as we're all learning and growing, let's just keep sharing information so that we keep leveling up everybody's information to something better. But here's the deal. You don't need to do 30 minutes of abs once a week, twice a week, or even five times a week. You don't need to do it. And planks aren't exclusively better than crunches. Uh, and it's not about how frequently you work your abdominals or how many different ways you do it. This is why I've started to move away from saying abs and core because it's so much more than that. Like your torso is the thing that houses your organs. It's like vitally important and so much more worthy of honor than just calling this region down here abs. Like what? Are you kidding me? You, this thing houses your stuff that keeps you alive other than your brain. Um, so it's vitally important and it's, it's hugely special. And just reducing it to like, oh, I do planks because that works my TVA. Screw crunches because that only works your rectus abdominis. Like reducing it to that is silly and like not the viewpoint I choose to take for my body and one that I hope you could appreciate and take on with yours too. So our torso for me is legit like all the stuff all the way down through your midsection Okay, and then all the way down to the bottom of your pubic floor or your pubic bone and your pelvic floor um, And then I've even had some coaching friends who extend that down into the hips um, We talked about hips and glutes last week and the week before so watch those because they relate to this week's lesson, too um, But so today I'm gonna concentrate it to diaphragm on the top. So the thing that helps you breathe uh, pelvic floor on the bottom, so the thing that keeps the stuff up and inside and also does so much more than just keep you from peeing or allow you to pee. So we're going to get to that. Uh, and then we're going to cover all like the stuff that's all the way around. Now you don't have to have an anatomy lesson to go through today. Just understand those regions and know that's where we're talking. Okay, so one of my favorite things to say and that has become even more apparent to me in the last few years um, is, and it's, it might be trite to some, but that's okay. Go with me on it. Um, is that you can't fire a cannon from a canoe. Okay, so think about that. Think of a canoe, okay? Put a cannon in it and then fire it. Like, what would happen to the canoe? It would blow away. It would be terrible. Like, don't do that. Like, if you're going to go into battle, like Game of Thrones style, you're not going to ride a canoe. It's just, period, you're not. Um, so you want a big, sturdy ship, right? So if you want to generate power from your body, you have to have a big, sturdy ship. If your body is a canoe, it's not going to be able to generate power and it will not be able to provide the stability that you want. So in order for like your leg to push off the ground with any amount of stability or force, you also have to have stability in your torso so that it can brace and allow you to do that. If you're a cannon and you're, or you're a canoe and you're just flopping around and you're really light and easy breezy and you don't stabilize very well, not going to happen. So um, when you're thinking about that, you're always thinking like a big part of having a strong torso is having it be stable to generate power. And that's why in the Unbreakable Body program, which for those who are just watching this for the first time, this is like part four of a six part series of my six pillar framework that makes up the Unbreakable Body. So that's why we're talking about Strong Torso today uh, and why folks figure out where they're at in that program and how much stability and strength they need to generate because it'll be different for everybody. Um, so when you're working on building a strong torso, so much of it is on developing the amount of strength that you need and stability you need to actually generate power out of your limbs. And so holding a plank is great because that does help your body start to build some strength around your midsection. Uh, but it also doesn't give you the opportunity to practice providing stability in your torso while you generate power out of your limbs. And this is where weightlifting and doing a lot of the drills you see me do on Instagram that look like I'm barely moving at all, but I'm giving all of the force in the world to try to lift and move my leg or lift and move my arm. Um, those like FRC style control, neural control drills. Um, those two things go a long way to helping your neurological system start to gain that connection of stabilize the torso so that the leg can push or the arm can push or the leg can pull or the arm can pull or whatever. You can do things with your limbs. You don't get to practice that when you're only doing crunches, leg raises, planks, add, add in your favorite ab exercise here. And this is why like many weightlifters, like, um, like big time Olympic weightlifter fan people will tell you like they barely do abdominal training because like the workout for them, bench pressing, um, clean and jerks, squats, deadlifts, all of that is an abdominal exercise. And I agree. And the times where I have been a heavier weightlifter compared to like rock climbing or something else, I agree. Like you, if you're doing that right, you absolutely feel your torso muscles stabilizing you. 
in addition, with more of the training that I do now that's more neural control training and really learning to control every single element of range that I have in my joints, the same is true. I get massive abdominal cramping as I do those because those muscles are working intensely hard to stabilize my torso and keep it stacked and on point and allow the rest of my body to move. So uh, when we finished today, I thought I would post a video of one, of one or two of the drills that I did um, simply because it's really hard to fit it all on the screen here and get you to see what's happening. So I'm gonna post a link to that in the comments below so you can catch that right after we finish here today. That way you can see a couple of drills and I'm, I'm gonna just give you the caveat right now. Those are not where you start, but what I would love it if you did is to find a version where you can go and do like an easier, like leaning back a bit farther or not lifting as high version of how I do it, just to give you the idea of like, oh, my body could work in that way. Hmm, it doesn't yet. How do I get myself to get there? And that then is like what we always say, get yourself a book, get yourself a coach, get a program, go to a workshop. These are the things that will help you the most. Um, my workshop coming up in Chicago will be mid-September um, and you can find more about that on the Fit for Real Life products page uh, or ping me a line if you have a question about that. It'll be at CrossFit Turbine. Woohoo, love those guys. Uh, but also too, there are so many books you can read. There's so many different things that you can learn on the internet that will really help you, whether it's self-guided or with a coach or in a, a group setting. But to try each of those drills that I'm going to show you today, because those drills are requiring you to be stable in your torso and move a limb. And that is essentially how you have to move through life. So when you're thinking about your torso training, yeah, put some in that, you know, targets specifically the transverse abdominis, and that would be planks that really, really help with that. And maybe put some in that work your obliques, something like a pal-off press is one of my favorites because uh, it's not so much about rotating the body, but about anti-rotation of the body, which is something else that you have to be good at. Um, and then getting into things when you move and progress up to it, uh, exploring weightlifting, whether that's doing it once a week as a supplement to whatever else you do, like endurance athletics, uh, or making it your main thing because you super love it. I will say this, get with a coach so that you learn exactly how to do it properly uh, because there are many ways for our body to cheat, which brings me to point number two and my other sip of coffee. So when you're thinking about training your torso or your body, period, think about this. Close all the exit doors which is not something you'd wanna do if you were trying to keep people safe in like a building. But nonetheless, in your own body, close all the exit doors. So when you're doing a yoga class or when you're weightlifting or when you're doing some of the drills I teach you or where you're in your unbreakable body programming, wherever, you're gonna notice and find that there are ways that your body would like to shift and move and dump energy to give you an easier path to success, in quotes. Success, though, means recruiting all the muscle fibers that you want to use uh, and, and use them to develop strength and stability in the area and also execute the movement that you're doing correctly. Your body, though, loves you so much and it just wants to find an easier path for you. It wants to find the path of least resistance. Your job as the conscious individual in this conscious controlled environment of your training world is to disallow that and to go, oh, I'm noticing that I want to shift my rib cage over to the side. Okay, exit door, close it. I'm noticing that I want to drop my head forward. Ooh, exit door, close it, bring the head back and in. I'm noticing that I want to get away from the cramp that is starting to happen in my oblique by twisting just a little bit. Exit door, close it. And if you can do that and close off all of the exit doors that you're noticing your body wants to go to, all of a sudden you start generating an immense amount of stability and strength in your torso as you're doing whatever activity. And this is for real, this is true of yoga, because I've had friends say it to me that they do this now too, now that I've been teaching this stuff. And as I'm taking more yoga, because that's something I'm doing now, um, I'm finding like I could be in this pose in this one particular way and hold it just fine. Or I could shift back just a little bit and then all of a sudden, so many more muscles are like flexing and tensing and wanting to cramp up and makes it immensely harder. And it's not because you're trying to make it harder to be a badass. You're trying to make it harder so that your body becomes better at handling significant stability, load, and force, whether it's generating force or receiving it. Uh, so you want to do that during your conscious controlled time because in the unconscious uncontrolled world, when someone is like a child is going to run and jump on your shoulders because you're just seeing them for the first time at the summer barbecue or your dog starts to run away and you got to catch it or just whatever, the random stuff that happens in your world you have to be ready to respond immediately. Exit doors close instantly so that you respond without going, oh, I just twinged my low back, right? So close the exit doors, all right? So the next time you're training, start looking for where the exit doors are and just start closing them one by one by one and notice how your workout changes. Okay, so let's go on. 
Uh, so I wanted to talk about two things that people do commonly that they're screwing up their torso training when they do or do not do these things. Which, by the way, for those who are wondering, I'm drinking a dark roast today from Africa. And I, yes, I make coffee in my room because why would I put it anywhere else? That's been like one of the best upgrades to my life in the last few months. Well, in the last month is like putting the coffee uh, grinder and all that stuff down here because it's wonderful now. And that way I can just work from here the whole time. Anyways, we're off track talking about coffee. Two things that you might be doing to mess up your torso training. One, when you're doing your torso training, not remaining stacked and tall or remaining excessively stacked and tall. And I am going to show you what this looks like. So there is like a natural slight curve to your spine. That's normal. Keep that. What most people do, though, is we'll over-exaggerate either the top or the bottom curve, either uh, rounding, so here we go, hold on, either pushing through their thoracic spine too much or arching through their low back too much, okay? And we do that sometimes because we're trying to find our space in our torso and not exactly sure where it is, and so we go to a place where we can create tension, uh, which is different from stability, by the way. And this is where a coach's eye really helps and comes in handy because they can go, yeah, yeah, I see you're trying to create tension by doing a plank, for example, and pushing through your upper back, but I don't want you to do that. I want you to create stability through your entire body. And those two things are a subtle difference. I highly recommend you hire a coach at least once to have you help learn about how to create that technique better in your programming. So, but what we're gonna do today is this, this may help you. It's about my guitar string, okay? So I'm gonna teach you my guitar string. Okay, so, our two points are going to be here, right near the sternum, okay, and then uh, pubic bone, so right down at the bottom of the front of your pelvis. So actually take your hands and find them, point to your sternum, and find the bone in the front of your pelvis area, that's your pubic bone. You're going to put a guitar string on there, okay, and so guitar strings, they're always a certain, like, tautness, right? So when you're doing your torso training, you're not going to allow your guitar string so let's tighten this up here. So guitar string, there we go. You're not going to allow it to go slack like how my shirt just did. And you're not going to break your guitar string, okay? And then you're going to go about your torso training, whether that's planks or hanging leg raises or pal off presses or whatever you're into, okay? And you're going to keep your guitar string nice and taut. And notice that as you're doing your drill. And so you go in your head and you picture yourself or whatever you picture in your head. I picture myself in muscles and cueing and visuals and all those things. When you do that, Notice your guitar string and notice if you're starting to get slack in it by pushing your chest into your cavity of your body, okay, and so thus overusing that uh, upper curvature of your spine and the thoracic spine, or if you're starting to lose everything down in the lumbar spine and you're going to break your guitar string in the front from doing that. So think about your guitar string the next time you do that. Then, number two, not squeezing your glutes. So there are so many folks who don't even know how to squeeze their glutes when they're doing a plank or at the bottom of a hanging leg raise, or when they're standing to do um, medicine ball wood chops, or doing pal-off presses, um, or any of those things. And so it is, that's common, but it's not normal. And quite often these things happen because we've learned how to brace during our day to hold some tension, whether that's wearing a, two, a skirt that's like tight fitting and has no elastic in it, uh, or pants, same thing, uh, or wearing an outfit that just doesn't allow like the deeply relaxing position to be in. We start to learn to hold these pieces of tension. And some of that also um, embeds its way down into the glutes and allows, or disallows, I should say, you uh, from, from actually squeezing your glutes. So in the next time you're doing any of your torso drills, whether it's some sort of like hollow hold on the floor, standing drill, hanging drill, find where in that drill you're able to squeeze your glutes and where you're not. So in a hanging leg raise, you wouldn't be squeezing your glutes on the lift, but you would flex them very briefly at the bottom to have full hip extension. When you're doing any of the other drills, you should be able to maintain some kind of glute contraction the entire time. And if you can't, you're missing out on the supportive network of the glutes pushing with the hips and then the torso muscles all stabilizing together. So those two things, your guitar string and squeezing your glutes, are two ways you might be messing up your torso training that you make some small changes and all you don't even change the exercise or reps. You just get better at it automatically. Okay. I see some questions. Okay, good. We'll get to those in a minute. Good. Next up. Um, peeing, breathing, and bracing, and why they might be messing up or influencing your torso strength and stability. So if you are breathing and not a deep breather, you are going to have a hard time creating torso stability and strength because your torso is a barrel. So the diaphragm is on top, your pelvic floor is on the bottom, everything else, muscles, tissue, fascia, all of it wraps all the way around. And so then we have our, we have our barrel right there. Okay. When you don't breathe well, which many of us who get into high stress breathing, which is this up here, 
okay, and not actually using our diaphragm, when we do that, we lose the top of our barrel. And so then we're leaking energy all the time and we're not able to actually like flex the diaphragm like the muscle that it is uh, to actually function for us when we're doing anything that requires torso stability. So the diaphragm, you can actually palpate it. Better to do laying down on the ground, but I'm gonna show you anyways. So we're gonna go under the rib cage and then I'm gonna stop talking for a sec so that my torso relaxes. Okay, you're gonna get up under the rib while you're laying on the ground and start massaging under this area. You can go as far up and in as you want, but it's literally hooking under the rib cage and then massaging. And if that's tender, uh, then you got some work to do. You can start doing some self massage on that and start changing how you breathe. And remi reminder, if we put our hand on our chest and one on our belly, I'll do it up right here. We put our hand on our chest, one on our belly. Our breath should be coming mostly from here first as our diaphragm inflates and expands. And then lastly, from up in here. So in real time, something like this. I'm usually high tension when I'm with you guys because I'm on, kind of on stage, but I'm gonna try to relax for a sec here. If you're feeling like joining me, this would be great. You can just put your hand on your chest and your hand on your stomach. And we'll inhale deep through that belly, letting everything down here expand and finishing in the chest and then exhaling and letting it out. And letting it all sink back down and in. Rib cage allowing itself to drop down. If your rib cage can't drop down, it's because these intercostal muscles have kind of forgotten how to flex and bring themselves back together. So you might put your hands on your rib cage to assist. Going back again, here we go. Okay, so taking that nice deep breath and relearning how to do that. And that is actually really hard for me to even get a good deep breath going when I'm teaching because it's very like, ha, 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 SNS is up and let up and I'm ready to go. Uh, and you need to relax into your deep breathing and allow yourself to, ha, huh, be at ease and be here. And so it might be worth setting a reminder to do that once or twice, like an hour, when you're at work in your day, like me, going, <laughs> getting from thing to thing to thing, to have a moment to just take that long breath and breathe. I like to try to aim for like eight second inhales, eight second exhales, and then say to myself, receive, release. Just a quick little meditation to help you do that as you go through your day. Peeing, okay, so a lot of women, um, deal with peeing issues like they sneeze and they pee uh, or they can't like just they can't maintain bladder control anymore um, I do want to recommend um, a person who I've looked up to for a long time who I'm like basically trying to become sometime in the next five years minus the children that she has kids are great I just don't want any um, Katie Bowman uh, is awesome and I love her and we are very aligned in many of the things that we teach uh, and cross over in different ways like she has kids and so she has this interesting dynamic of like having been pregnant and having raised children and nursing and all of that. Um, highly recommend her information on um, like pelvic floor stuff, uh, as well as diastasis recti. If you are a woman who has had a child, um, she's a great resource for that. I don't try to kid anyone into thinking that I know what it's like to be pregnant or have had a child, um, but I understand the biomechanics of it. But if you want somebody who actually has done it, who understands and has dealt with the very real reality that like pelvic floors stretch when you have babies, uh, I can't recommend her resources enough for that. That being said, there is one thing I would like to tell you. It is a good thing to notice the tension that you carry in your lower abdomen, and this includes your pelvic floor. So noticing like right now, are you holding a low level of tension in your abdomen as if you're kind of sucking in a little bit? And are you kind of pulling your pelvic floor up into your body further or not? And can you even notice if you're doing that? And if you can't, maybe the next time that you actually do go to the bathroom, like noticing which muscles you're using when you start to urinate and when you stop. Because getting in tune and in touch with even these deeper muscles that are far inside your body, um, that maybe for some of us, and like if we grew up in a place where like you don't talk about this kind of stuff, like that's changing, the world's different now. It's good to get in tune with like the musculature and the stuff that's deep down in your lower abdomen so that you understand what's happening and how it's working. So if, even if you can't do it right now, the next time you can do it and pay attention to it, start to notice what muscles you're flexing all of the time and which muscles you could stand to let go on. I used to be a permanent like lower abdomen flexor, uh, and that was partially because it was um, related to like stress and things that I was, uh, kind of how I was living my life, but also to women especially, but I think men get this too, the notion of like you have to be sucking in all the time, uh, and not like in a <gasps> like suck it in like so I can see your rib cage kind of way, but in that low level like slight tension. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'll actually stand for this one so you can see like this part right here. So this would be holding like some low level tension just in my torso, okay? I'm gonna relax all of it now. 
Ooh, my belly even just said good morning too. Okay, and you see how things just hang down and forward a bit more compared to low level tension and then hanging down and forward. That slight shift in relaxation, whether your belly's big or small, doesn't matter. There is a slight shift in relaxation and change that happens when you actually relax the fibers and the tissue in your lower abdomen, but many of us have been conditioned to not do that, and that absolutely will influence the strength and quality of your torso strength and stability and, and training that you're doing. Because, much like these guys, if you're holding some low-level tension in them all day, they have now learned to be strong and conditioned here. But if we have to put them here for some reason, or we have to put them way down here, or we have to move them in any other way, you start to move into territory where you're not conditioned and strong, and so you automatically lose a benefit from having this muscle actually be able to do its work. Your lower abdomen is much the same way. So learning how to actually relax completely and then be able to flex when you need to to create bracing and tension in your body really will make a big difference in the overall quality of your torso training and your strength. Bracing. Okay, last one I want to say about bracing. Bracing is not this. <sighs> okay, ready to go. And we used to say, pull your belly button to your spine. Some people still say that. I don't find that that cue works for me very well um, anymore. I think I use that like... I don't know, long, long time ago, not knowing any better. But I don't think it works as well anymore. So bracing is not that. Flexing it in as hard as you can, and now you're ready to do your torso training. Bracing is more like this. You're going to take a breath in, and then as you exhale, you're going to pack the air into your lower abdomen. So it looks like this. I'm going to take a breath in. And and I've packed some air, and I'm holding it right here in my torso, in my lower torso. And then wherever I need to send bracing to after that, whether that's just flexing my glutes, or send it up into my chest and shoulders as I'm ready for some other like sport activity uh, or whatever. So from the side, again, it's not, <sighs> pull it back as far as you can. It's big breath in and <sighs> pack the air into your lower abdomen. The diaphragm gets to flex down. Everything here gets to hold some air and then you get on with your exercise. Okay. All right. So that is all of the things I want to teach you today. Those of you who've been hanging out with me on a Saturday morning as we're doing this live, can't thank you enough. Um, good. So the uh, Don, yes, you're welcome. Good question. Close the exit doors. All right. So we have to finish with a joke. Are you ready? I'm moving my coffee out of the way because I make it a little violent on this one. All right. So I have a joke for you today. As always, duh. Okay. The <laughs> really, I like can't start them even without <laughs> losing it. Whatever. Okay. So I was walking through the canyon up here in Utah. I was walking through the canyon the other day with a friend. I said, look at that big rock. Because there's a big rock over there. And she looked up and just eyed it and eyed me and was like, boulder? And I was like, <sighs> puffed out my chest. Look at that enormous rock over there. Was that boulder enough? <laughs> I know, they're so groan-worthy, but I don't care. They're so fun. You get to be foolish. It's great. I hope that you can be foolish in your day-to-day. -day. I hope you've enjoyed some of the cues and tips I've shared with you about strong torso work. Um, I'm going to post the links to those two exercises to so just try out and see where you're at with them. Know that you probably are not supposed to be starting there, but you can get an idea of like, oh, here's where I have an opportunity to start working on some things. Do want to remind you that um, my workshop in Chicago is September 17th and 18th at CrossFit Turbine. Would love to see you there. Also, thank you so much for your continued messages and questions and feedback. It helps me do my job better and help me know what you guys need. I love it. I can't thank you enough. And I look forward to crossing paths with you soon. Enjoy your weekend if you're watching this live. And if you're watching it later, enjoy your day.